one thing for us to meditate on before we go into that beautiful song of worship. Um, I just feel like the Lord is saying, and he's been saying to me, and I feel like I should share it with you, is that he is preparing the way. And that I saw a, um, a sign that said, uh, road work ahead. A big orange sign said road work ahead. And I feel like the Lord is um, saying that to many of us, that there is a road ahead of us, but there's road work taking place and that we need to be patient and wait on Him to prepare the way and to make the way. And I also saw um, orange safety cones around um, something. And I uh, felt like the Lord was saying there are some things that we are wanting to protect and, um, and that really we need to remove those safety cones and just let Him take care of some things. And we just need to trust Him. So there may be something in our life that we've just wanted to protect and um, even put to the side where it doesn't get touched. But the Lord wants us to know that we can trust Him even with those uh, precious things, those, those dreams or that pain. And so He's wanting us to, to trust Him to remove those safety cones and let him prepare the way and let him do the road work that's necessary because he really does want us to travel on a solid foundation. And so, Lord, we just thank you for this. We thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you are preparing the way, that you're taking care of the road that is ahead of us, and you're working on the road. You are working on the road. As we sit there patiently, God, we can wait on you to prepare the way and work on the road so we can enter in to all those beautiful things that you have for us in this new year and in our life. In Jesus' name. Are you changing the Lord Jesus? You changing the Lord Jesus?
Maybe not your week, but let's just have everybody just come up and surround her. And just thank God that he started it. He started it, right? Last night, he's making the connections, and we just want to agree. We just want to join our faith with yours. The God of miracles, the great physician, the enemy's not going to steal your praise, your joy, the anointing that's on your life. Worship is warfare. Warfare is wor worship. We thank you, Father, for Deshelle. A mighty warrior. We thank you that you take delight in her. She delights in dancing before you, Father. In worshiping you in, a, in an abandoned way. Father, how far will you let the show go to be a testimony? How far will you go, Father, to make her a testimony, a praise in the earth, Father? We thank you right now. Shine your light on her. Release your healing power right now. Right now, into her hips, into her joints, and her bones, and her blood. Every area, Father, we ask right now. Move, Holy Spirit. We command for it to come into alignment right now. For her to be healed and to be whole. We thank you, Lord, for breaking everything off of the past. Every time she's been sick or had to go through this thing or that surgery or this, whatever, Lord, we cast it all away right now. All of that is in the past. She will not be hindered by the past. That does not define her. That does not limit her. We thank you right now for your future and destiny. That it is secure in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We're going to see healing. Even now, we're going to see it spread, Father. We're going to see it like wildfire, Father. People walking in supernatural healing. Supernatural health, Father. Even as in the days of Moses and they were in the wilderness. They walked in supernatural health. Thank you, Lord. You've raised up testimonies like the shell, Father. Cleanse her, even now, cleanse her. Every area, Father. Every area of sin, every area of doubt, every area of fear. Wash her right now. We plead the blood over her mind right now. We plead the blood. Break in, Father. There was a prophetic word that was given in October when David Howell's here and his team. You guys are good. You guys just continue to pray. It's okay. And I want to I want to read that to you, and then we're going to expand upon that. Expound upon that. Uh, probably don't have time to do it today, and that's okay. But I just want to give it to you for those of you that weren't here and didn't hear it, so you can pray into it and really seek the Lord and, and receive in the coming coming weeks. So before I do that, I guess we need to take our morning tithes and offerings. And so we've got our our uh, baskets up here. And so if you're prepared to give. You can do that at this time. Father, we thank you for this atmosphere. We thank you for your presence. Help us to continue to walk in it even now. Let us not disengage or be distracted. We just continue to submit our spirits to you. We thank you, Lord, for being our healer and our provider. We thank you, Lord, that you never fail us. We thank you, Lord, for faith, hope, and love, these three remaining in us, keeping us steadfast in these last days. Father, we thank you for meeting the needs of your people, going above and beyond what we could ask, think, or imagine. We thank you, Lord. Opening the doors, opening the windows of heaven. Just thank you, Lord, for setting a course this year, doing something bigger, Father. Thank you, Lord. We trust you and praise you in Jesus' name. 
Thank you, Father. So I'm just going to just give you this. It's just, it's just a few sentences, really. It's not a long word. And uh, you know, like I said, just let it digest. Just chew on it for, for a minute. So David talked about sort of the word over Pursuit Church. He talked about sh the shoes of the house. And so what I'll be sharing maybe in the next few weeks is is new shoes for the new year. So we're going to kind of break down what does that mean for us? How does God want to peel back the layers on that and teach us and guide us with that revelation? And so I'm still praying into it. And he's just giving me a, 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 just a little bit of a glimpse into it. But here's what he said. He said, Pursuit Church is being called into movement. Pursuit Church is being called into movement. But the shoes no longer fit. The shoes no longer fit. He said, what carried you into this season is not what you need for the next one. But God is going to give you new shoes. So he said, it's time to exchange and to elevate, to take new and next steps. It's time to exchange and elevate to take your new and next steps. Now, Sounds great, and, but you know, here's where it comes to a little different <laughs> path. These new shoes will cost something. The new shoes cost something. That pains us a little bit. Oh, what is that? What is that going to look like? The new shoes cost something, but he said, but there's growth when you allow the exchange. The new shoes cost something, but there's growth when you allow the exchange. And he said, press into the Father's heart for the city. And, and we've many times have had words, and many of them are back there on this wall, our promise wall right back here. And so I just I posted that word. It's back there now with some of our other words that we've gotten recently through the years. But many of those words talk about the city talk about reaching the culture and dealing with racism dealing with division dealing with these different things bringing worship out into the community being out in the streets all these different things ministering to the poor that there would be a new sound that there would be a raising up of leaders all these different things that this would be sort of a hub you know where, where people come and they get sent out and they get equipped and sent out and so and the Lord has definitely, you know, been stair-stepping things. And it's cost us in different ways as we've had to search and surrender to that call and try to figure it out. And we've stumbled here and there and all the different things. But God's remained faithful and He's constantly reminding us of these things that He's spoken to us. And just building upon it. He's laid this foundation and He continues to build upon it. And it's such an honor and privilege to be with you guys and to be a part of God's plan in His house and His body here in this city. And so I just want us, and, I, and so, you know, we, we tend to take this first of the year, we do some fasting, and last year we really kind of called it Vision Month, and it really became sort of Vision Quarter. We went through January, February, March, just vision, just going through a lot of the prophetic words and just breaking some of them down. And we were praying on Wednesday nights and pressing into them. And so I feel like we we sowed a lot. We sowed a lot. We interceded, you know, in the spirit. And so I'm believing that maybe this year is going to be uh, a time where we see the reaping happen. Where we start to see some things being established. Where we've had little bits and pieces, but it seems like there's just been a lot of transition of people coming and going. But I feel like the Lord has got to establish some things. And that's why it's important for these new shoes to put on these new shoes. If we're going to step out of the old and into the new, we've got to make sure that we have firm footing, right? So I believe the Lord's going to really give us some insight into this, some understanding about how to put on these new shoes, how to walk this path, how to start to implement some things that He wants to establish. And He's been confirming some things. Once again, He's been confirming. He's going to start to establish it. In some more solid ways. In some real, I don't know, demonstrable ways. 
And so the thing that came to my mind, I'm not going to preach this or anything, but the thing that came, I'm just giving you just a little bit of the thought process that came to my mind about shoes, first off, it made me immediately go to Moses. Remember when he had that encounter? When Moses had, 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 had his whole life jacked up, right? He had all this privilege. He was part of the royalty in Egypt. And yet he had this heart for his people and, it, and he wanted to see them delivered and he, and he messes up and murders this guy out of his anger. And so he has to flee. Pharaoh wants him dead. He, he, he really thought, he thought my life is over. And, and so it says in the scripture that he, he goes to the back side of the desert. He went to the back of the... The desert's already miserable, right? And he goes to the back of the desert. Trying to flee. Just kind of, I'm just going to live out my days out here in obscurity. I don't have a home. I don't really have a family. I'm, I'm a foreigner. He says that. He says, I'm a stranger. I'm a foreigner now. I have no place. I don't fit in. And he has this encounter, right? With, with the burning bush. This consuming fire. And yet the bush doesn't burn up. And the voice speaks to him. After 40 years of just tending, you know, sheep out here on the backside of the desert, thinking that I'm disqualified, I'm unworthy, I'm, I, I, it's over. God's not going to use me. I had a chance and I threw it away. My destiny, it's gone. And then God shows up. And he tells Moses, you need to take your shoes off right now. Very significant. Take your, and we always think, you know, because it's holy ground, and yes, we don't need to profane God's holy, and so anything that's dirty or of ourselves, our flesh, we need to leave behind, and you know, and that's true. Well, that's true. But I, I believe there's a lot of depth to that as well. But there's layers of meaning that's intertwined in there. He takes off his shoes, and then he he he. He tells him, I, after, after he, he says a few things to him, and he says towards the end, before Moses starts to question him and they have a conversation, but he says, I am your father. I'm your father, is what he says to Moses. And I'm not just your father, I'm the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I'm a faithful father, generation after generation. I'm a covenant-keeping God. And I've heard my people, and I've seen you, Moses. You're the very one that I'm going to use to deliver my people. And Moses, well, I'm supposed to go deliver them. I can't speak all that. You know the whole conversation that he has, trying to back out of it. Who should I tell them that sent me? They're not going to believe me. I'm a, I'm a murderer. I'm out here tending these sheep on the backside of the desert. I've been gone for 40 years. They won't even recognize me. I have no authority. I have no ability to do anything. And what did he say? Here's what you tell them, Moses. Tell them, I am that I am sent you. And the interesting thing about that name, that this, this name that God gives to Moses to tell the people is that it's not just I am that I am that that to be or not to be right here I am I, 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 I've always been I, I be and I will be right and that's the thing is that it does go there it actually means I will be what I will be <laughs> so Moses right now here I am I'm your father I'm coming to you as a father because this is what you need right now. You need to be brought back in as a son. That you're not disqualified. Right? You have an inheritance. You still have a destiny. I still have a call on your life. I want to walk with you like I've, I, I've hardly walked with anyone on the planet, Moses. But I'm not just that. I am that. But guess what? When you go to Pharaoh, I will be what you need me to be. <laughs> Man, we, we put all these new shoes. There's going to be an exchange. And He will be what we need Him to be. We don't know the journey. We don't know what lies ahead. There's some uncharted territory. But He's going to be who He will be. That never changes. Man, I'm telling you. 
feeling it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know, he, he calls his name. And this is the last thing I'll say. He calls his name. You know, and he, and he, he says, Moses, Moses. He says his name twice. And that's what happens oftentimes. God has to call us multiple times, right? Are we sure? You know, I'm not sure that was you. We get like Gideon, like, I'm going to lay the fleece out. I want it to be wet in the morning and the ground to be dry. And then he does that. It's like, well, wait a minute. Now this time I want the ground to be, right? We constantly need Moses. Moses. And so he calls him, right? There's a call. There's a calling. Moses. I know your name. But then, then a second time, it's like, oh, wait a minute. It's a, it's a summons, but yet it's a warning at the same time. Like the closer I get to God, I, I feel his love and everything else. And yet he's so awesome and he's so holy and he's so other than. There's this tension that's there. I feel you calling me. And yet when I get close, it, it's, it's, it hurts. It's, whoa, it's more than I can stand. I've yet to fully discover you in all your glory. It's too much, God. Dial it back. And God tells him, yep, yeah, oh, okay, that's good enough because your face is going to melt off if you come any closer than that. And by the way, take off your shoes. Because I don't know what would have happened if he, he hadn't taken off his shoes. You know, maybe, he, you know, his sandals turn into Nikes and it's just, just do it. And he's just victory everywhere he goes. Holy ground everywhere he steps because of his shoes got holy. His shoe, the anointing transferred to the shoes. I don't know. I know that's kind of silly, but this is who God is. He's this father. He's this friend. He wants this intimacy. And yet he's holy and eternal and awesome. And he's saying our name, Moses, calling us, and yet, Moses. That fear and trembling, that rejoice and yet with trembling, that talks about in Psalm 2. There's going to be times, there's a, there's a deal of taking off the shoes, and then when you take off the shoes, then God's saying, okay, now, I'm getting, now that you've surrendered and you've exposed, right? You've laid it down. Now I'm going to give you the shoes back with some authority on it, right? That's the thing. You give it up, and God says, now I'm going to give it back to you because you gave it up. So to qualify Moses, all you got to do is say yes and surrender. Take the exchange. Allow the exchange to happen. Leave the past behind, Moses. And let me be who I will be in your life. Amen? So God's got some new shoes for us. Are you guys ready to put those shoes on? God's going to give us some marching orders, right, Kaylin? So it's going to be good. So I'm just going to, does anybody else have anything they want to share? Anything on your heart? Anything the Lord's been speaking to you? I know it's dangerous to open it up like this, but that's okay. I trust the Lord. He's going to be who he will be, right? Go ahead, Jay. He's got a big, deep voice. You want to yell it out or you want the mic? Come on, my friend. spoke to Moses face to face. This is Exodus 33, verse 11. As a man speaks to his friend. The Lord is looking for friendship. Churches are made of individuals. They're not a corporation as we think. They're individuals who have like-mindedness, purposes. But often our purposes are self-centered. They're focused upon our own needs. We come to church to get filled rather than to release filling to others. We come to the assembly of the saints because we want to feel good rather than make others feel good. 
because we have baggage from the past. And so the Lord this morning has been impressing on me, and, and I believe this is in line with the new shoes, and I, I've hesitated all morning to give this word, but I wanted to make sure it was the Lord. So when you started it there at the end, I said, Lord, if I'm supposed to say something, let him say something about somebody saying something. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad God is good? Aren't you glad that He loves us? Aren't you glad this morning that He can take our baggage away? One of the things that this word requires is taking off the shoes that that led you someplace before. And it doesn't mean the shoes are bad. It means the shoes need to be replaced. How many of you have wore the same shoes for the last 10 years, right? Probably not. You, you probably buy new shoes on a regular basis because you wear the soles of your shoes out. I, I don't want to I don't want to be harsh in, in what I'm saying, so don't take me wrong. But I believe uh, since I've been here, I've had this um, impression in my spirit that there are many holding on to the past to this church and not releasing themselves to the present and the futures. That we can you continue to say, well, that's not how it was done in the glory days when and, and that could be very true because they were glory days amen how many of you know that what God has done in the past is not to be put away is to be put as a marker of what he can do in the future what he can do in the future but if you hold on to it and refuse to take that next step because it doesn't look like the past you'll never see what the future brings and so as I said a moment ago, the church is made of individuals who have laid behind them the past and are moving forward. Paul says it this way. He says that I have not attained the fullness of what there is in Christ Jesus. But he says this one thing I do, I leave behind those things of the past. Now, how many of you know he wrote that letter to the Philippians where he says this, where he could have looked back on the Philippian area as a real bummer where he got beaten, whipped with a cat of nine tails 39 times, thrown in prison, but he can look back and say, well, look how God rescued me when Silas and I were singing, right? And he could have looked back and said, oh man, that was really cool the way God saved the jailer and his whole household and we established a church there. But he doesn't say that to these people. He says, what was behind me, I leave behind me. And I press on toward the high calling which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. So when the church is to accomplish something, it accomplishes it because we together are pressing forward toward the high calling in Christ Jesus. And Paul says here in Philippians, he says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and even the fellowship of his sufferings. Well, most of us would say, well, I don't want the suffering part. <laughs> but that's some of the stuff you just talked about that's going to take place in the future. There's always a struggle, as Kaylin talked a few weeks ago, about climbing a mountain. You don't climb a mountain without struggle. Look at the people who have gone to Mount Everest and how many have died in the climb because they were not prepared. They did not pay attention to the things they needed to pay attention to. And in the church, the same thing is true. Some people die in the, in the church without ever attaining what they were supposed to attain to because they were not paying attention to the things that they needed to pay attention to. So Paul says to the church here in Philippi, he says, I leave all the stuff of the past behind. Now, when he got to Philippi, he had done a lot. He had seen miracles, he'd seen signs and wonders, he'd seen churches built, people saved, people healed. And he's also seen a lot of brutality toward him and the Christians around him. 
But he says, I lay all that back there. I leave it all behind. And so I press forward to the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. And this morning, as, as I was getting dressed this morning, the Lord was impressing upon me. Continue to leave the past behind. Your failures, your mistakes, the identity that you used to be. Some of us, we've had identities where we go, well, I was an alcoholic or a drug addict, and we hold that part of our identity in kind of respect that somehow God redeemed. Leave that behind. You're a new creature in Christ. Quit reflecting upon what you used to be and look at what you are and what you're going to be. If you've had success in ministry, don't look at what you used to do and how you accomplished it, but look forward to what He will do today, who He will touch today. Because I believe that God has got great things for us, for you. Not the church, but for you. And as you walk in what God has for you, it'll fill what the church needs. Because the church, ecclesia, is the assembly of the called out ones. You've been called out to be like Jesus. You've been called out to be a friend of God. You've been called out to be Jesus in the flesh to others today. So leave it behind, whatever it is, good or bad, and say, I'm moving forward. I'm walking with Jesus. And I'm not going to let any of the past hinder me. I'm not going to let my successes hinder me because sometimes we look back and we go, well, I'm not having that same success now. But God wants to have new successes today. I grew up playing a lot of baseball. And I knew every year when we started the team, every home run I had hit the year before didn't matter. The ones I hit today are what matters. Yes, amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Awesome. Right on, right on. So, real quick, uh, Sarah Huffman uh, and her husband Jamie are in the house. Good to see you, Jamie. Uh, for those of you that don't know them, I've known them for many years. Back when I was a youth pastor, we were in the trenches together. They were youth pastoring, and we did all kinds of fun things together. Uh, services together, conferences, just a lot of memories, a lot of God moments. Uh, they were leading the burn at one point, which is a 24-7 sort of movement that had chapters everywhere. We weren't doing it 24-7 us, but with other chapters in different places, we were doing vertical worship uh, and, and different churches were hosting it, different musicians. It was just a really cool time. Sean Foy, who many of you guys know, now he was, he was just a, a, a young hippie guy that nobody really knew back then, driving around in a van, and he called it the burn wagon. <laughs> he was just going around the United States uh, with these hippie, other hippies just worshiping the Lord and praying, praying for breakthrough in America. And then he got sent to the nations to do some things and he came back and he's in Bethel now. But anyway, it's not about Sean Foy. Anyway, they are connected with that ministry. And uh, I have much respect for, for Jamie and Sarah. They're, they're very uh, pastoral, very prophetic. Uh, Sarah's been coming on Wednesday nights when she can. You guys are in the Benton, Bryant area still. So they're a pretty good distance away. But they're in the house this morning on the first day of 2023, and that blesses my heart. So thank you guys. I love you all. Glad you all are here. I hope it's been a ministry to you. And so Sarah, I'm sure, to, much to her chagrin, is feeling like she's got something that she wants to share. She she obeys the Holy Spirit when, when he speaks. And when, when Jay mentioned Mount Everest, just like he was waiting on the shoe thing, she, <laughs> that triggered her. And so it's a domino effect. is awesome. And so I'm just going to let her speak what's on her heart. Is that okay with everybody? It's yeah. awesome. When we were at the beginning of worship and Justin started saying, we're, I don't remember if you said mountain, but you said, we're going higher, higher, higher. I saw two mountains, and the first mountain was Mount Everest, and I've never been there personally. Um, but if you've looked at, watched documentaries or movies about that mountain, there's a, a like this ring at the top of the mountain where you can add your flag and so there are flags little pocket flags from all over the nations that people whenever they reach the summit 
they add their nation's uh, flag to this ring that they've got secured up there. And I just felt like you guys have contended for your region as much as anybody I know. I mean, you guys have just relentlessly just, you just petitioned heaven for your region. And I see you guys getting to the, the summit of this spiritual mountain and being able to put this region on that ring and say, I'm claiming what is here. I'm claiming what is here in this high place for our region. And I saw three elements to um, to the to the journey of that. And I didn't even know that mountain climbing had been a theme around here lately. But um, the first thing was rest. In order for them to, I mean, it's a struggle, but when they get to base camp, they don't just say, well, let's go on the next leg. They take a minute and they, they I think it's like mandatory. They have to, when they get to a base camp, they have to spend a certain number of hours there just resting. So I feel like, not to neglect, you know, you've got that push, but then whenever you, you know, whenever you get that momentum thing, fall back into the rest when it's the right moment for it. Don't just try to keep pushing relentlessly. Let the Holy Spirit rejuvenate. Um, the next thing was um, the oxygen. Once they get to a certain point, they can't go any further without carrying oxygen with them. And you know, that rare air of heaven that we only get through his presence, you're, once you get to a certain level, if you don't carry his presence with you as you go, you're not gonna make it. It'll become a matter of casualties at that point. So don't, I just feel like an admonition is don't forsake the presence. Don't forsake the rest when it's necessary. Don't forsake the presence. And the third thing was, as they go, they, their pack, you know, they start out with a big pack, and as they go, they shed the contents of their pack as they go. They have to lighten the load. They have to lighten their load as they go up. And so those were the three things. Um, that I, that I, you know, she got shoes and then I had those three things. And that was the first mountain. And I feel like that is pertaining to what's ahead. And I, I, I saw the other mountain that I saw, and I can't remember, do you know the name of the mountain where Moses met with God and the Israelites were at the base of the mountain? It was Sinai, okay. And um, I saw that little scene just flash in my mind, and I've pondered that so many times because, um, you know, there was a tent of meeting in the camp, and Moses would take Joshua and go there, but they were the only ones who made use of it. And the rest of the people, when they saw Moses going to the tent of meeting, they come out to the edge of their tents and watch. They didn't want to go in. And I wonder if that's because when... Moses rallied the people and said, we're going to meet with God. And they came to the base of the mountain and Moses went up. Moses had a conversation with God at the top of the mountain. And the people witnessed thunderings and lightnings. For them, it was a storm. And it was a fearful thing. But Moses was up there having a conversation with God. And I feel like these are your encounter people. Because as the Lord has drawn near, you've been praying for revival, you've been praying for encounter. But when it comes, sometimes it seems really messy because of the justice that's involved. See. Justice is necessary for healing. Justice is a part of healing, but justice comes with this wake of messiness. It feels like a storm, especially when you're at a distance from it. But if you can say, if God is in this, 
and God is drawing close, I'm going to encounter him. You can have an encounter in the midst of what feels like a storm happening around you. The shaking, the fearfulness. And so, I want to be careful what I say, but in those times in a body, when it feels like a storm, it's a fearful thing. Not everybody understands to be drawn into it, be drawn into the encounter. Because that is the, uh, the realigning, the justice, the, the making right is just as much a part of revival as the ribbons of love and peace and joy. It's all a necessary mixture for it. And I feel like what I would say to you is these are your encounter people, the ones who could see it and say, this is missing and it hurts a lot that God is in this. And I'm going to listen. I'm not going to recoil because this is uncomfortable. I'm going to draw near and I'm going to listen. And Lord, I would just say, would you know us as hungry? Would you know us by hunger? That we would, you would know us as the ones who do not recoil from what is in your hand. Because whatever flows from your hand will satisfy. Whatever flows from your hand will satisfy. So know us as hunger. Know us as hungry. As the hungry ones who always draw into you and who do not recoil when you draw near, we can accept you in all your facets. We can receive you in all your forms because we are hungry. We are hungry for you. For you, for whatever that means, for whoever you want to reveal yourself as, for whatever you want to do, we are open to you, we're hungry for you. We just know one thing, there's so much we don't know, there's so much we can't understand, there's so much, there's so much in the why that remains. But the one sure true thing is that only you, only you will satisfy. And so come and satisfy your hungry ones. You guys in agreement with that? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sarah, for being obedient. Powerful. That is powerful. I want to plant that flag on top of that mountain, man. Jefferson County. Representing on earth. That's awesome. A lot of wisdom there. That was, both of you guys, very instructional. Thank you. Definitely what I was praying for. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers, for seeing, <laughs> seeing our weakness and helping us on this journey up the mountain. Thank you guys for being willing to go on the journey. I received that. Sarah, the, these are encounter people for sure.